over the field he is working whether he is in industry or he is in management or he is in teaching whatever profession he is of course uh, his uh, in his main choice is to of course to, pro to progress in career uh, for any because we are dealing with academic institutions uh, for any academic institution there are uh, uh, three stakeholders. One thing I tell you in the beginning itself. Sometimes, kabi kabi aisa hota ki net cut jata hai. So if uh, there is any break, just call me. HRDC se kaun saab hai? Baap pe bethe hue. Hello. Hello. Anyone from HRDC? सर अभी उनको कॉल करते हैं सर आ जाएंगे नहीं जो भी है आप भी अगर बीच में ऐसा कभी-कभी होता है कि नेट कट जाता है मैं घर से कल बात करता हूं कभी-कभी नेट कट जाता है तो इमीडिएटली यू जस्ट कॉल मी है ना मुझे पता नहीं चलता कि नेट कटा कि नहीं कटा तो कभी-कभी ऐसा होता है ओके सर मैं यहां बोलता जा रहा हूं ओके सर यस सर हां तो यू जस्ट इन्फॉर्म मी ओके सर ओके फोन करते हैं अगर कोई बात इस बीच में होता है तो मुझे इन्फॉर्म करते हैं ओके ओके सो वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस अह in any academic institution, we have basically three stakeholders. The students are there, the teachers are there, and the institution itself becomes a stakeholder, whether it is a college or a state university or department or a central university or national institute, whatever it is. It is itself a, a, a stakeholder because uh, nowadays in the age of ranking, every institution wants to have its rank uh, improved every year. And the ranking of the institution will always improve based on the activities or based, based on the performance of the students as well as the teachers. Okay, there are definite procedures for the assessment of the students in every university. They have to attend classes. Uh, there are definite number of classes which you have to attend. Mostly, we say that uh, the students should attend 75% of the classes, and then they will have to appear in uh, different examinations from the time. Uh, choice based credit system is started. They have to appear in midterm and uh, end term examinations, and uh, there will be regular evaluation. And on that, on that basis, uh, the uh, student's performance is uh, judged, and he gets the grade grade A, B, C, D, whatever it is. Uh, of course, in the new education policy, there are some, some changes that have been made. And if, you, if a student wants to leave the a course after one year he gets a certificate if he wants to leave the course after two years he gets a diploma if he, if he wants to continue up to third year he gets a graduation or if he if he, his performance is good he may continue up to fourth year and get a honors or uh, uh, a graduation with uh, research so that is okay that is a clear cut mandate is there clear cut rules are there for that uh, and uh, nowadays we award instead of getting 60%, 70%, 80% marks, the grades are awarded A or A plus or B plus or C or whatever it is. Now, coming to the teachers whose performance is evaluated almost every day. Because I, if I am giving lecture, you are uh, assessing my performance, whether I am able to satisfy you or not. Same thing happens to you when you go to your class, uh, a 15 minutes or 55 minutes class. 50 students, 60 students, 70 students, whatever they are sitting, they are judging you. So every day, the the examination of the teachers occurs. So for the students, the examination occurs after three months or two months or six months. But for teachers, the, their examination is almost every day. And the, the students judge the performance of uh, uh, the teacher. And at the end of the semester, uh, we get the feedback from the students in the form of a separate performer, which has been introduced uh, by NAC and other institutions. So for a teacher, uh, his teaching record, feedback from the students, feedback from the peers, and of course, self-reflection and self-evaluation. Uh, what are the improvement in teaching practices he has been doing? Then how much involvement is there in uh, involved in research and other activities and involvement. So several things are taken together when it comes to evaluate the performance of a teacher because the academic progression of the teacher 
from uh, for the first stage up to the fifth stage generally we call it as of course the sixth stage is there in some universities some universities have not accepted the sixth stage up to fifth stage it all based on the performance of the teacher and that is evaluated now what happens an excellent university of course wants to support their academics at each stage of their career helping people to reach their potential and become distinguished in their chosen areas as an academics in the education research career there are opportunities to progress over time from assistant professor to a senior assistant professor professor then to associate professor professor and senior professor whatever it is nowadays of course in during in the new scale age we have uh, five grades uh, the criteria the university or ugc has set for teachers probation and progression to other levels are organized under three pillars of the performance main three pillars are there your ability to educate the way that inspires that is inspiring and effective that is your performance is seen as a teacher uh, then your performance as uh, how much you have been able to advance the knowledge that is you, your ability to advance knowledge through research and to ensure the research has an impact that that is more important to show that your research has an impact it is not simply uh publishing a paper of few pages which has no impact and thirdly to be an active academician taking a collegiate and collaborative approach in your work in different forms we will be discussing at a later stage at different forms so, so basically how you teach how much improvement you have made in teaching mechanism or teaching making it teaching effectively what research you do which has been able to generate knowledge or in, or uh develop knowledge and uh, what are the activities which we are doing at different levels now if you see uh in general trend which is in india as well as in other countries also the faculty members can track progress in their career through promotion which is based on a variety of factors what are those, those factors the teaching effectiveness that is you have to summarize when you uh, when you fill up the forms uh, uh, for API, we will be talking about API. Uh, summaries of the course and uh, instructional evaluation, then peer review of what has been done, a student award, honors, and other recognition which has been done because of you, because you have been able to guide the student nicely so that the student gets awards and honors, and awards and honors which you have also received, awards and honors and commendation for excellence in teaching which you have received. These are all counted. Similarly, teach in teaching productivity. Uh, publication in teaching a specialty, the specialty which is which is the the core area of your uh, specialty. What is the publication in that area? Uh, have you been able to develop some instructional modules, or you have been able to do media packages? Nowadays, uh, there are lots of uh, UGC have started schemes where you have to upload the lectures on MOOCs. Uh, on swam platforms so how many how many lectures or you have uh, introduced or uploaded on the swam platform that is uh, that will help in uh, online teaching then uh, individual research and uh, funded grant which you have been able to get in your area so these are the things which are similarly uh, some scholarly or research productivity in the form of your publication in journals and documentation of reviews and research activities by colleagues as well as the documentation of funding research uh, funding secured so these are all the things which are basically and then in addition to your real real research and teaching some other activities like uh, in uh, uh, in the university service what is your collaboration in the university services in different committees or uh, uh, nss or uh, different there are, there are different types of activities in the university so what are your contribution in those uh, uh, committees or maybe as a warden or a hostel superintendent or the examination superintendent or uh, other there are lots of activities in the university and have you been able to get some recognition or some uh, other things from the university on the basis of your work which you conducted in those university uh, committees then uh, evidence at local or state level that is evidence of distinctive service at the local or state level that is a teacher's responsibility not only in the college or the, in the university your what what help you are doing to develop uh, a nice society uh, uh, a collaborative society in your region 
so evidence of distinctive surface at the local or state level or your recognition in different societies academic societies especially uh, societies which is subject uh, your uh, which is related to your subject whether do you receive any recognition over there or not or uh, any special awards etc which you got from the society or uh, community involvement including both profession so there are so many things which are taken together uh, uh, and these things together act help you in when you are just for promotion. Uh, earlier, it used to be merit promotion scheme, where uh, a, lecture, a lecture which is appointed through basic uh, UGC criteria, net qualification, or PhD. And uh, then the lecture was after uh, five years, he used to get a senior lecture position. And then uh, there, there was just four scales lecture, senior lecture, read and, report, uh, and professor. But there, are, there were no definite performer for that that where the points were calculated only uh, of course the, in the selection uh, of course from lecture to senior lecture only a screening committee was there then from senior lecture to reader the selection committee was there and from reader to professor selection committee was there but there was no definite uh, performer for calculation of uh, your activities in different levels but from 2010 uh, this academic performance in the API was initiated when career advancement scheme came into existence. Career advancement scheme came into existence after six, uh, uh, our, your sixth uh, pay commission. And in this, uh, the process has become comparative, comparatively more complicated, but more simple also. Uh, here in API, uh, your you are evaluated in three categories. Category one is the teaching, learning, evaluation related activities. Uh, category two, co-curricular extension and professional development activities. And category three, research and academic contribution. These are the three things which are calculated. I think uh, most of you know how much point is there in category one, how much point is there in category two, and how much point. This is there on the UGC website, and you know that uh, there are definitely you have to self assess and from category one to two or two to three you need to have 75 points each year and then uh, similarly in category two you need to have uh, 15 points each year for uh, becoming eligible and then for category three uh, there is no restriction you need to have uh, lots of points because of research and uh, academic contributions so we have uh, in cas scheme which is nowadays uh, acceptable in every university uh from assistant professor to stage one to assistant professor to stage two you need four years from assistant professor two to three five years and then from there to associate professor three years from associate to professor again three years and professor to senior professor again 10 percent is again but most of it must still have still not accept except ACU, jnu and one or two universities on the it no other universities have still accepted senior professor scale so we have still uh, one, two, three, four, five scale it's itself that is uh, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, and 10,000 academic pay grade. So these are, this is the basic structure which is there. Now, um, what I would like to emphasize here in this lecture is, uh, of course, the, you are doing teaching activities, you are developing teaching modules, and uh, every teacher wants to do best uh, activity in the teacher, and he, he tries to activate, associate himself with uh, different activities of the university. My emphasis here is on the third category here. Today's lecture will be basically on third research and, uh, and other academic contributions which we are doing. So, uh, in any university or any college, whether it is a state university or a, a central university or a national institute, you have to go ahead in addition to teaching, we have to do the research also. Because uh, on that basis, you get you, you must have seen the uh, the the performer for say, third category. How much uh, points you get for papers published in international journals? How much points you get for publishing in national journals? How much points you get for publishing a book in international publisher or, or for local publisher? Or how much marks you get for uh, editing books? So uh, it's it's a long table, and uh, you know how much points. And that these points are especially needed when you you improve from category three to four and four to five at those points there are more emphasis is given on these two things so in the 
in addition to teaching which is your primary duty you have to do research also but you have to maintain a balance between teaching and activity teaching and research activity you have to maintain a balance it's not because earlier uh, the people used to say especially in degree colleges that okay my responsibility is only teaching they used to come to the uh, to the colleges take classes and just simply decide we are uh, teaching in uh, coaching institutes and doing some other business or something like that but now the the university grant commission has made definite rules where uh, you have to do research and unless you do research promotion will become very difficult so you have to and now of course uh, several universities have started uh, biometrics also so that you have to be there in the department for the whole day from nine o'clock till five o'clock or till four o'clock biometrics has started several universities so you have to be there in the department so if you are there in the department if you are there in the university you will be doing some kind of academic activity in addition to uh, your teaching activity and that academic activity of course comes in the form of uh, research whether you are uh, doing some experimental research or you are doing some research in social sciences or you are doing uh, writing uh, some book or uh, book chapters etc now for research what do you need is financial assistance for a variety of problems should be provided for research you need financial assistance you cannot do research without money because uh, if you are uh, doing as research in science you need to have uh, uh, different kind of instruments or chemicals if you need to do research in social sciences you have to go for making surveys and other things so you need to have money from where they, that money will come that we have to think about then the, you have to maintain a balance between basic research and applied research that must be complementary because basic research provides generates knowledge applied research takes into consideration the local problem which some which are time to time appear either in the form of diseases or in the form of some other problems which comes up uh, diseases of the plants or diseases of the animals or whatever it is uh, or technological development nowadays we are talking about uh, technological development uh, more emphasis is now on technological development so for that also you have to go for applied research so you the the basic and applied research must complement each other and for that what we need is a free interaction between university students research scholars and scientists uh, in kind in the conducive research atmosphere that has to be uh, of course for a, for a conducive research atmosphere we need to have a free interaction between the students research scholars and the guys of course these are the three categories the research and students uh, both uh, masters and students and of course from next year it will be undergraduate students also who will be doing research in their semester seventh or eighth semester and uh, the research scholars and the scientists or the teachers of course scientists are here teachers there should be a conducive environment so that they can freely interact freely discuss the things uh, there should not be any in political or social so, so in for, for a conducive environment what we need is research one of the primary function of the university and for that uh, a viable connection between research scholars and guide should be there and here when we saw, say research scholars it is basically masters and students phd students as well as the guide and uh, there should be no outside intervention political or theological which is nowadays it has become very common that should not be there in the uh, in the research because the university is uh, a knowledge generator the, the knowledge which has been generated may not appear good for you at present but at the, uh, maybe after some time maybe after 10 20 50 years that knowledge may be of some use so both uh, knowledge has to be generated and the there should not be outside interference in generation of the knowledge you may accept that knowledge or you may not accept that knowledge you may accept that publication or may not accept but uh, outside intervention should not be there and of course the optimal uh, optimal allocation of resources should be there for that until less resources are there so we will be at the end of the lecture i will be basically we will be deciding from where to get those resources from where to get those funds so it means a university teacher has to do in addition to teaching on other activities of the university in the form of different committees he has to do research also and unless he does research uh, uh, his promotion will not be possible now what has the the and in the research the change there, there is a change in trend in recent years research is a necessity as there is a necessity as the origin of research 
there could be a, there used to be a classified research which is very a specific research in a very specific area then gradually we moved to integrated research uh, involving persons from different faculties or different disciplines to combine together to solve any problem uh, but now that integrated research which uh, which is also called as the multidisciplinary research integrated research is basically multidisciplinary research because the people from different disciplines comes together to solve any problem uh, now the develop now the change trend is that we should do be doing research which is uh, uh, have technological application that is advanced technology in various ways that is because the, the whole world has changed to market economy so if you are talking of a market economy the, the research simply publishing their papers research papers maybe in good journal or bad journal that is not going until that uh, research is converted into technology uh, that's why nowadays you must uh, know you must both uh, see or you have been seeing that there are lots of emphasis on patents and other things but in patents also we must say that the patent should be such which can be marketable it's not that you just publish a patent thousands of patients uh, patents are published and uh, unfortunately in india even one percent of the patient patents do not come to the market once our vice chancellor uh, our prime minister also said that uh, even less than one percent of our patents are really marketable so we are uh, there is a trend change in trend that lots of patents are coming in uh, in some of the universities website you will be saying that they have they have they have 100, 100 patents or 200 patents, 300 patents, but none of these four patents have been able to, until unless they are converted into marketable things, they are of no use. So the, the trend of the research has changed from simple basic research or very classified research to multidisciplinary research or interdisciplinary research to a research which is, uh, is responsible for development of technology. And then in these uh, research, we have to also evaluate the uh, different level of parameters for evaluation how much research activity percentage of research activity and how much resources is used for that activity that has to be seen into uh, that has to be seen that is uh, if you are doing research how much uh, percentage of time you have spent on that research from your teaching schedule and how much resources has been utilized for percentage of resources used in research activity and that the research is is uh, relevance to the current trend or not that is current technology trend is technology development so the research which you because the, the money has become or the funding for the higher education has become very competitive nowadays and in this competitive uh, age you cannot waste your money for a research which is of no use so the change the trend has changed that you do research which is some value uh, maybe today maybe tomorrow but they must have some value that is application uh, uh, the application of that research in real world problem that is technological development so this is a, a, a university teacher in addition to cheating teaching has to do research and then he, when he is doing research he has to follow a definite pattern nowadays now we okay we talk of research we take research and research excellence now when we are doing research we talk of you know, this uh, this research is useless this research is excellent and on that basis you are uh, sometimes recognized we are sometimes awarded or uh, the government uh, awards or sometimes one day you get funding for research on that basis so research excellence has become a buzzword today everybody talks about research excellence politicians policy makers funding bodies academics and other stakeholders use the terms in different contexts. In addition, more and more ranking based uh, on so-called performance indicators are becoming widely used and misused to influence decision makers. Nowadays, uh, the rankings, uh, you get the, the different ranking agencies. Some of them ask you to apply for ranking. And some of the agencies, they get the data only from your web, university website. And on that basis, they give the ranking to different universities or different colleges. And that ranking plays a very important role when the, you get the fund from the government. So uh, ranking, everything is now moves around ranking. What is your NIRF ranking? What is your NAC ranking? What is your Times Higher Education ranking? What is your QS ranking? So these, uh, there are lots of uh, 
uh, talk about ranking and that ranking mainly based when we talk of ranking it is mainly based on your product what is your product your product is post good as students who is marketable you produce suppose uh, hundreds of post graduates and that they are not getting job uh, your product should be marketable and that how how that is proved on that is proved on the basis of how many of them have got job and the research which we are doing that should also be marketable the use of these performance indicator has a broad impact in science by influencing the evaluation of research units and career development of individual researchers framing individual recruitment justifying funding and funding. so these uh, things are basically responsible for getting your fund researchers themselves are increasingly using these metrics even uh, though at the same time they acknowledge shortcomings there are, nowadays for evaluation of research excellence there are certain metrics which are used and these metrics have become uh, the, there are some objections also there are positive points also and negative points also in these metrics so an excellent researcher is an expert or a researcher with potential to become an expert in the case of young group leaders or are his research field with an outstanding level of international recognition for his has impactful contribution to the field as evidenced by that mark lead author publications is also she is also recognized by peers in his field and has a clear and a strong vision on the future development within his area of research is she is a teacher and mentor for the next generation of scientists performs research according to the highest qualitative and ethical standard and is actively involved with them so an excellent researcher or an excellent teacher is providing good teaching as well as good research so what is the role of university role of role and importance of research in the universities what is the role in the university research is one of the central mission of modern universities uh, research is the principal generation of new job knowledge you know that research is complementary as well as uh, supportive to teaching and research is a means of enhancing a university academic reputation and ranking that is very important because uh, it's not that you have a note we sell pages notes of other day a baby who see notes of our uh, that that was problem with some of our teachers but that has to be uh, taken up very ser seriously that you don't you have to improve the content of your teaching every year maybe you add just a few lines in the form of a content but you must add it's not that you have nowadays we are teaching with uh, uh, modern technology so-called powerpoint presentations in powerpoint presentation once slides have been made you go on uh, using the same slides year after year year after year. that should not be done and uh, yes then uh, when it comes to so-called modern teaching, we used to teach uh, basically on boards. Uh, gradually, uh, the universities or the uh, the university grant commission emphasized on uh, so-called digital teaching. I, I don't generally agree with uh, simply PowerPoint through the traditions until unless uh, you make your hand white with chalk or your shirt with uh, uh, chalk powders, uh, uh, real teaching doesn't occur. But uh, okay, anyhow, we have to live with the with the time. So we can contribute both. We can go, we can continue with the board teaching as well as uh, PowerPoint teaching, but we must improve our PowerPoints every year. It's not that you just upload your PowerPoint uh, to the website of the of the department and the, uh, and the students copy it. What is happening nowadays? And that had that has started with the uh, Corona period itself. When we uh, we went for uh, online teaching, we uploaded the the uh, lectures or we uploaded the PowerPoints on the website, and the teachers copy uh, the students copy. They 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 never bothered to attend the class also. They never bothered to attend the class also. Or sometimes they used to simply connect themselves with the with the teacher and they they would di disappear and the laptop or mobile is connected because they used to get uh, uh, the PowerPoint from the website. So and that trend is to some sometimes, especially when you are going for online teaching, that trend is continuing and that is very bad. That should not continue. Uh, 
formally every university has to on the other hand every university has to formalize its research priorities plans and policies it's okay one is a typical research in a specialized area uh, which is uh, maybe multidisciplinary or technology development on the other hand for every local area there are certain problems so you the university has to do, look for the review the country's the regional local or community research need that is the responsibility of the uh, the universities especially state universities and degree colleges they they should look for the local need of the pro, uh, or local uh, community needs and they their some of your their, their research should be directed to solving the local problem especially the social science research selection of the university strategic research trust at the level of campus college and department that should be done and support for individual faculty researchers trust but in addition to that okay one area is that you look for the you prioritize the local needs or local problems but at the at the same time uh, you must support the individual faculty research it's his own choice also what happens the problem here is that if you did your phd of course uh, nowadays 99% uh, of our assistant professors are phd's so when you did your phd maybe from a very good in university or maybe from iit or from delhi university or jnu or or whatever it is you did your phd from very good place and then you got a job in some some remote degree college and you were asked to do research which is the priority of that area so here uh, the what you uh, did for five years or six years or seven years in research that simply goes based so what is suggested is that the researcher or assistant professor may be allowed to continue with his research also in addition to what is the priority in that that particular area he should be allowed to do that also so support of the individual faculty research choice and initiative that should also continue in addition to the local problem and there should be a balance between disciplinary and interdisciplinary research that has to be maintained it's not that you purely go for interdisciplinary research or you purely restrict yourself to just your discipline that balance has to be maintained then university research policy every university must have a comprehensive set of research policies and that is the first and the four most important one that is research integrity and research trust this this point is coming in a big way nowadays throughout the world because there is lots of problem with research integrity and research misconduct even from the best universities in the world last year itself 10000 research papers were uh, retracted back from the best journals from azevier from springer and uh, other journals more than 10000 research papers were withdrawn why withdrawn they were either they were providing wrong data or fake data or these papers were copied from some other papers so this a uh, research integrity or research misconduct that has to be taken up very seriously we should not publish or the researcher should not publish in uh, in predatory journals number one or number two sometimes what happens we get uh, as a, as a reviewer we receive research papers from different nowadays the, the publication in the publication has become a big industry and in this industry what happens is every uh, publishing house tries to publish more and more and more and more and in that craze for more and more they send papers for review but they they will be sending papers for review to an area to a, to a person who, who does not belong to that particular area and for our happy choice they we say okay i can i can review that paper that should not be done a senior persons like me or any other person when we open uh, our uh, email in the morning every day we get uh, papers for reviewing and these papers are from different areas they have nothing to do with my kind of research area but uh, you will be getting those papers for review so you have to be one has to be very critical in that that no i am not going to review those papers which are not from my area so that that integrity should be there and when we are publishing we should not go for misconduct or we should not go for plagiarism we should not go for uh, pop, uh, providing fake data or cooked data then conflict of interest and conflict of commitment should not be there between the between faculty members health safety and environmental concern in research has to be has to be a serious problem in university so university has to be uh, has to look at 
the, the, the end products of research in the form of chemicals or glassware, they are properly discarded or not. Uh, research, if the, if the research is involving human uh, subject, with that ethics has to be taken care of. Research involving animal subject, there also I think there are, there are definite ethical committees are there in every university that has to be seriously taken up. Then uh, definite policy regarding functioning or sponsor project should be there in the universities, and the university should establish some research centers also where purely research is being done by the faculty members. Then uh, again, the code of ethics that uh, inclusion of uh, because uh, from next year. Uh, from seven to eight semester in undergraduate level in the, in the colleges, uh, you will be teaching research methodology. So in research methodology, uh, code of ethics should be a very important point. We must have at least one unit of code of ethics for research, and uh, we must be able to teach them what, uh, what are the plagiarism softwares, fraternity, and others. And there should be a research advisory committee in the university which should advise a research ethics committee. So these are some of the things which are necessary uh, in the university. Uh, now, this is one hand, okay, we should have a definite policy in the university, we should have definite ethical committee that should have a uh, definite committee to look for uh, uh, outcome of the research, etc. Then assessment of that research uh, is uh, very important. Generally, there are, of course, assessment of uh, when assessment is done, when we because we say that there are three stakeholders, uh, the stakeholders are students, stakeholders are researchers, or assistant professor or professors or uh, all their stakeholders are te non-technical personnel also. So when the assessment occurs, by the, either by NAC or NIRF or whatever it is, uh, they, they assess the excellence at the institutional level, they assess the excellence at the researcher or teacher level, and they assess the excellence of at the other personal level, non-teaching staff. They are the performance of all the three things are being judged when the assessment is done by the, by the peer team which comes to the university. They see what the, the technical staff is doing, whether they are maintaining the registers properly, whether they are maintaining the chemicals properly, whether they are maintaining the labs properly or not. Similarly, uh, the performance of researchers, that is PhD scholars, they are, they are regularly coming to the lab also, or they are uh, uh, pre-thesis examinations are regularly held or not, and is it uh, it has become just a formality or not, or the other things or research committees are there or not? Because nowadays, as per rules, every can, earlier it used to be simple guide. Now, as per UGC rules, there should be a research advisory committee for each student, where there will be three to four members. So whether the the meeting of the research advisory committee is held after every six months or not, what is the uh, sometimes they ask for the data of the meetings of the research advisory. Committee. So th there are several things which are uh, seen when the assessment occurs uh, and uh, then uh, there are some other questions we can we, we can ask for now then basically what happens definitely defining research excellence that is again a, a very difficult uh, question defining excellence in research is necessary but difficult to task there is no consensus on the meaning of research excellence and if and how it differs from research quality. Some scholars think research impact as part of research quality, while others note that quality and impact are two different elements that consume research. So there are different views about uh, if you go through the uh, journals or go through the big top uh, journals like Nature and others, you will be seeing that there are different views to what we will be calling it as research excellence, whether the, the research which is immediately uh, marketable is it uh, the excellent research or a research which is simply generating knowledge is that uh, uh, the the excellent research so so the purpose of research yes for development goes beyond generating new knowledge to generating knowledge that can improve development outcome now what is being done basically is uh, the criteria which are generally uh, used is the uh, criteria commonly used are research impact, peer review process, and practice. These are the three area uh, aspects which are generally seen. Research impact, again, becomes very difficult to see. Of course, sometimes, suppose uh, uh, what happened in, in uh, COVID-19, uh, the whole world has 
involve themselves in development of uh, vaccine and immediately within a year they have been able to uh, to develop vaccine and the the impact which we which we can we, which we were able to see so that is research impact but research impact can be judged only in few cases when some definite problem occurs yeah, research is done and that that uh, impact can be seen but there are two two other processes that is peer review process and matrix data these are the most common processes which are being used when you submit your research paper it goes to the referees and referees go through it and they, they give their comment if you submit a research uh, proposal or a project for funding it goes to the referees and referees gives the comment and so so the, the experts are there who will be looking after the the projects etc but their the views are always subjective the same thing will be uh, will be very good for some uh, researcher for others he will say okay the, the research which we have done is is of no use so that uh, is always very subjective so effectiveness of the peer is, is too subjective efficiency of the process is expensive to set up and run and of course it is expensive also of course uh, for the research publications it's still uh, the journals though they charge money uh, even the book good journals but famous journals are charging money nowadays but today they don't give any money to the reviewers but on the other hand uh, uh, the other agencies uh, which uh, give uh, especially for awards and other things which they for which they hire peer sir, reviewers please, please, please. yes yes Hello. You want to say something? No. Hello. Okay. Hold the bhai. Yes, I So uh, the the peer review process, which is the most uh, acceptable process, there is no doubt about that. Uh, at every stage, peer review is done at promotion at every level. Uh, your uh, uh, paper is uh, sent to referees, uh, reviewers for for their comment. Uh, then uh, in uh, research papers when you submit they are being sent to reviewers for comment when you submit a research proposal for funding that is also sent for review but there it is always said that the the end result is subjective but we have we follow that the other uh, things uh, which have come into uh, very common use nowadays is the, the matrix that is the impact factor and h index these are the two indices which have become very common nowadays the impact factor is the basically the impact factor is the uh, uh is the of that of the journal uh is uh, a measure of the uh, frequency for which the article in the journal is cited uh, and nowadays all of us hear a lot about impact factor that i have published paper in this impact factor i have published or whenever you go for uh, interviews or selection committees generally the uh, the experts ask you your paper uh, what is the impact factor of your uh, journal in which you have published papers these are the things which are asked but there has been lots of lots and lots of uh, objections about the impact factor and if you go through the uh, journals like science and nature etc there are lots of paper which has been published which uh, talk negatively about impact factor because the impact factor basically judges the journal not your research paper because impact factor is basically the number of cited number of papers cited in two year uh, so number of papers published in that year cited in two year uh, that can cal calculate the impact factor so sometimes what happens uh in any issue of the journal suppose there are 10 papers five of them have been cited a lot and several of them have not been cited by many people it's still all the papers get the same uh, value or same impact so uh, i will not go into details of impact factor because the impact factor was uh, a a major which was basically initiated by the uh, librarians uh, they were interested in purchasing only those journals which is seen by more people and for that they said okay those the journal which is more cited that will be seen by more people and that's why they they used to, they will be purchasing those journals but that has uh, the its its value has been changed and nowadays we talk a lot about impact factor similarly so uh, why the impact factor journal should not be used for evaluating research use of general impact factor conceals the difference in article citation as i told you there are suppose there are 10 articles in a uh, journal Five of them has been cited a lot and five of them has not been cited, but you do not differentiate which article has been cited. The impact factor 
is based on all the all the uh, papers published in that journal. General impact factor are determined by technicality unrelated to scientific quality. It has nothing to do with the scientific quality of the paper. And general impact factor depends on the research field. In those areas where more people are working, there will be more citation. Those areas where the less people are working, especially in the basic research, uh, the impact factor will be less. But the work which has been done in basic areas, that uh, that that continues for a very long period of time. But, but, but the research, research which has been done in those areas where more people are working, that is a short lived. Uh, so that is again a shortcoming. Uh, so uh, here I've given, there are so many authors who have written a lot against the uh, impact factor, but they still, uh, for you or for me, uh, of course, not for me, because I've already crossed those stages. For you, uh, when you will going for your selection committee, the people will ask you what is the impact factor of general. So you have to cope with it, and you will have to try to publish papers in journals which are good impact factor, which have good impact factor. Similarly, H index uh, is uh, the is the citation of the particular author, or total citation of the department, or total citation of the university. So that of course, how many times a particular paper of an author has been cited, that gives you H index. So that has, uh, has become, H index has become very important nowadays when it comes to funding by different agencies, even in India, the DST or DBT or other agencies, they sometimes they restrict that uh, until unless the university have this much H index, uh, the funding, uh, the fund, some special fund will not be given. So that is a, must, that is again a very important factor. So these two, uh, uh, then in, there are other factors that is uh, 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 that is I I ten index is there and some other indexes are there which are used. But the H index and impact factor or uh, impact factor is very commonly used. So these uh, these are the 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 aspects which we have to face when we talk about the research. But for doing research, we need money from where the money will come. So for that, uh, we I, I will be talking a little bit about the, the types of research grants which are available for universities. Research fund is one of the most important element uh, uh, in higher education and high impact academic journals. Uh, the Of course, the, if, the, if the university has a good physical and technical infrastructure, it has talented faculty, or if they take quality admission uh, and they have adequate financial supports, of course, uh, that plays a very important role in high impact research output. And that that uh, is uh, that gives the brand name for the university. There is no doubt about that. We have in India, there are very good universities where, where there are talented faculty and they have good admission. And of course, uh, they, they come uh, in one to 10 rank of the NIRF. But uh, it's not the case with every university. What happens uh, if you are a good university, you have lots of funding, uh, you get lots of funding. So this this good faculty, good good student, good research publication, that influence basically the, the funding from the government as well as from industry. It also attracts foreign collaboration. The end result is uh, a positive impact on the university ranking and quality research output. Of course, funding is there, good research will be there. But what happens? Although the government agencies have a number of schemes to support research and development, there are different schemes from government of India. Uh, but fact is that most of these funds go to IITs, national institutes, and laboratories, and to some extent to certain universities. <coughs> this is the reality in our country. The funds which comes from different agencies, from of science and technology, or from social sciences, they all go to either IITs or to national institutes or central universities, very small amount of fund comes to the, the uh, state universities or degree colleges. This is a, a reality and we all face this reality. Now, but if it's still, we have to find for the, we have to fight for the fund. We have to get fund for uh, uh, our research. The research funding in India is basically from government agencies and uh, to some extent from corporate funding. Corporate funding is very limited very very limited as compared to uh, other uh, countries of the world in our country uh, the corporates uh, give very little uh, funding for the research 
uh, I'm not going to details of how much fund is generally in countries, uh, 2%, 3%, 4% GDP is uh, given to research in our country. Unfortunately, we have just 6 to 7% of GDP in the form of research funding. This year, uh, uh, in the budget, government of India said that they will be giving 10,000 crores every year for research. But out of that 10,000 uh, crores, six, uh, 65, uh, 6,500 crore, crores will come from industry. But I'm, uh, I don't know uh, how much the industry is actually going to give uh, because the, the new uh, Anusandha National Research Foundation, which has, been which has been established by government of India, uh, they said that uh, the, in the budget, uh, they said that they will be giving 10,000 uh, 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 10, crores for research. But out of that, 6,500 crores will come from an industry. But there is no definite rule for how the industry is going to harm. And most of you know it very well, and I, I also know it well. The industries are very hesitant in giving funding uh, to the for research, except for a few IITs like IIT Bombay or IIT Delhi or IIT Madras. They give funding for research in, gen, in universities, in general universities, whether it is a central university or a state university, generally they do not give funding for research. So that, that has to be kept in mind. So uh, in the research funding, we have national level uh, fundings from UGC, from CSIR, from DST, from DBT, ICSR, ICMR, DRDO. So many agencies are there. I use so many agencies are there which give funding for research. Similarly, for international agencies, we have British Council, EU, DAD, uh, GSPS, TWAS. There are many agencies which give funding for research. And sometimes some of the universities give uh, a, a token amount to newly appointed faculty, but that is very rare. And then in the UGC, if you go through the UGC website, you will be coming across the so many grants which are available from UGC. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, the, the two major uh, research schemes which used to be, that is major research projects and minor research projects have discontinued for several years. Uh, uh, maybe they will be starting it in future. Uh, even emeritus scholarship is no more there. Travel grants for the teachers are given to some time. Uh, the postgraduate merit scholarships for for university rankers are it, because it comes through the university. Uh, in some universities, it is there. Uh, DS Kotari research grant for uh, newly appointed faculty uh, was uh, advertised. Uh, two years back, has, but the decision has not yet been taken up. Only one fellowship, which is commonly the UGC is giving, is the a startup project uh, for the newly appointed faculty, which is very common nowadays. Similarly, for uh, there are certain uh, other schemes of the UGC, that is faculty development program, uh, FDP, which uh, you are attending, that is uh, there, of course. Uh, but uh, that faculty development program is OK. You have lectures and other things. but there is no money for doing research. Then you, sometimes uh, the UGC gives uh, funds for organizing conferences, workshops, and seminars. Uh, how much degree colleges people get, I don't know, but they, they give uh, funding for conferences, workshops, and seminars. And network resources uh, in the colleges, of course, nowadays, gradually colleges are getting funding for network research. Instrumentation facility in colleges, a very limited fund is there. Then there used to be uh, earlier a special assistance for the program, etc., uh, which is uh, working in some universities only. Then, uh, in addition to that, uh, UGC have uh, certain collaborative programs for, with foreign agencies also. Then uh, DST has uh, uh, several programs. Uh, one is the Inspire scheme. Which, are, which was a very ambitious scheme, which has started giving funding, uh, which has started giving a scholarship to the students from, or encouraging a student from class 9, 10th itself. And that scheme uh, helps the students uh, the, at the undergraduate level, at the postgraduate level, as well as at the, uh, once you become a teacher, Inspire schemes are there. Then Inspire Manak and Why Kiran, they are uh, is also important case. Inspire and Manak is for the, for the teachers, as far as wise Kiran is for female uh, only. Then there are certain other uh, uh, skills from the DST, which is for basically capacity building, that is institutional capacity building programs. FIST is there, uh, that is uh, 
basically for the infrastructure development in a particular department and it is uh, given for five years and uh, first one is generally for uh, two to three crores rupees and the second phase is even for higher and similarly purse program is there purse program is uh, for in this is for department level the purse is for developing infrastructure at the university level it means here there will be involvement of several departments but both the cases in both the cases it is for basically infrastructure development for uh, for the researchers there will be very 10 to 15 percent money will be in, will be for researchers but uh, they give a good amount of money for purchase of equipment then sophisticated analytical instrument facility program is there government of india uh, in which uh, the government has uh, initiative to establish research facility facilities in different corners of the country so that uh, you cannot have facility in every university but there will be centers will be uh, uh, identified and these centers will have facility and you can use those centers by paying money for doing uh, some experimental work then this is this is in the same way you have sati s 2 t and some other program s 2 t is basically for training of uh, scientific techno uh, personals especially for uh, students uh, and uh, Supreme is another one which is for uh, prevention, repair, and maintenance of equipment. That, so there are several schemes of the DST for uh, purchase and maintenance of instruments. And there is uh, a scheme which is uh, uh, EMR. This EMR funding, which, which was the basic funding of uh, uh, DST, which was through SERB program, that has been now taken up by uh, Anusandha Anusand National Research Foundation. So, SARP is no more there. Anusandha, in recent meeting, they have developed the, the, the funding will be through Anusandha National Research Foundation. And the, the it is this is uh, one which gives uh, research projects. Then uh, there are schemes for high high risk, high reward research and uh, other research, startup research are there. So many fellowships are there. You can go through the DST or DBT websites and you can come through those. Uh, schemes similarly from in the icsr uh, give several fellowships and uh, my experience is of course uh, i am basically a scientist but i was looking after research and development in this university as well as academic program of this university i have seen that uh, indian council of social science research because though they give a small amount five to ten lakh rupees but they are they have, they have been very active in funding uh, research projects uh, both at uh, uh, national fellowships or senior fellowship or postdoctoral fellowship or doctor different fellowships are there which uh, the the icsr gives to the students of social science faculty sometimes they have short term empirical research programs uh, which they give for 6 months or 1 year especially this program a special call for short term program they are basically uh, an initiative from the icsr to evaluate the schemes of government of India. Every year, at regular intervals, government of India comes up with new schemes. And these research projects are for evaluating those research schemes. So uh, to an university in a social science department or social work department or economics department, they give projects that, OK, your team will evaluate uh, the, uh, the which uh, government has started in that particular district or in that, that particular state. So that type of scheme is very good and uh, uh, departments can easily get it. Uh, uh, last year, 2023-24, it was advertised. I hope in 2024-25, it will again be advertised. Then there are minor and major research projects are from out there from uh, ICSR. And then they have uh, visiting fellowships and cultural exchange program, etc. There from ICS, ICMR. So ICMR, ICSSR also gives good amount of funding. And this this gives funding not only for social sciences, for humanities also. For humanities projects also they give funding. So it's not that the humanities people should suffer that. So they, and, and of course the UGC also gives uh, to humanities. Then there was some new initiative, the government of India. Uh, and this one, the startup grant from DST as well as for UGC for freshly appointed faculty, that is very important. And generally, they give 8 to 10 lakh rupees uh, for uh, uh, freshly appointed faculty. But you have to apply 
uh, after your apartment within one year from your apartment, you have to apply for that. Take your program is uh, a program which is uh, two for the engineering college uh, faculty members. Uh, these are the two programs, GYAN and SPAR program is basically a foreign collaborative program. In the GYAN program, you can invite faculty from outside India. They can come to your college or your university and give lectures for one week or two weeks. The only thing is that the, the outside faculty which you are inviting, it should be in the first 500 list of universities. So the rank of that university from where you are inviting a uh, person should be in the first 500. Similarly, the SPAR program is basically a collaborative research program in which two persons from in two PIs from India and two PIs from the foreign country will be involved. And this program is generally for three, three years collaborative research program. And in this, you can send your PhD student uh, for short visits over there and they can send their PhD student or uh, the PI itself, they can come to India for up to six months to stay in your in your department or in college. So this, uh, these are two programs uh, which are uh, uh, governed by uh, IIT Kharagpur, but this is for all subjects. It's not that it is because of IIT, so it will be only in science. It is for all the subjects. In this year, in our university here in AMU, uh, a person from economics, a person from foreign language, and a person from English department about this program. So this is a, and the GYAN program is very good. Uh, lots of uh, uh, schemes are sanctioned every year. Then ICSR, IMPRESS program is important from ICSR. Then a stride uh, program was an initiative from the UGC, but somehow it has not worked out. So and then uh, PMRF research fellowship is a very prestigious fellowship uh, in which the research scholars get 70,000 per month. Of course, it is a very competitive fellowship, but it is a very important fellowship uh, uh, for the research scholars. Then uh, we have international funding uh, and collaborative research. We can have uh, there are different schemes of uh, one is uh, by USEF, that is United States India Education Foundation. They give uh, fellowships for visit of to both uh, science and social science and humanities students. Uh, from our university, we have seen that several students from English department, they have visited US for 10 months or one year uh, and, and the other people also. British Council also support, support collaborative research. Then Europe, European Union has very important program that is Erasmus Mundus. Uh, they give funding for master's degree, for both PDF, as well for teachers for short visit programs to European countries. Uh, for three months or six months uh, programs for, and they give in almost every subject. In almost every subject. Last year we, we had a person from our Hindi department who visited Germany, Germany through this program. So there are programs. Then Marie Curie is basically for science students. That uh, has the sandwich program and now there is a twin uh, programs of UGC have started and in twin programs they have collaboration with different countries. Then Third World Academy of Sciences uh, they have fellowship uh, for research and training, basically for countries of the southern hemisphere. So through these fellowships, you can visit uh, China, Japan, Korea, Australia, etc. Then JSPS has the uh, Japan Society of Promotion and Skills, a very huge body which gives uh, postdoctoral fellowships, uh, invitation fellowships, as well as collaborative research projects also. Uh, Indian National Science Academy have international collaboration uh, with uh, many countries. Uh, some of the names I've given here, UK, Germany, Japan, Korea, China. And they, they, these are some very, uh, they give, uh, uh, for youngers, they give, uh, uh, they allow for three to six months for senior people for two weeks to three weeks. But uh, this is a very important program and uh, one must apply to these programs because what happens is to in our faculty members, they are very, very hesitant in applying for foreign collaborative projects. One should be, it's not that uh, uh, getting these funds are very difficult. You can apply and you, we, uh, if you are doing good, some good research, you will always be getting it. Because I have experience with uh, Erasmus Mundus also. I have uh, Erasmus uh, experience with TWAS also. I have experience twice, three times with JSPS. I have three to four times uh, experience with INSA. And all the fellowships I got it. Uh, I'm not. I don't think consider myself a very good researcher. But if you apply and if you if your program is good, 
you are your tech, uh, program is technical you get the funding for three to six months or sometimes one year or two years so i always encourage the young faculty members that they must try these fundings so these are different kinds of funding which are provided by national or international uh, organizations but to apply for fund what we need is a research proposal whether, whether if you are applying for a foreign fund they always ask for technical proposal what is the what is your idea what you you plan to do for three months or six months or in india we have to we have different agencies sub, uh, submit uh grant research proposal research fund for two years or three years and for that we have to submit a research proposal because there is no possibility that your department or your college or in your university will provide you fund for research you have to fetch your own fund fetching a fund gives you a uh, points as well as once you fetch a fund that will help you in doing research and that will help you in publishing good papers so one has to in any case one has to try to get research uh, uh, research projects sanctioned by different agencies whether you are a science uh, personnel or you are from social science or humanities one has to or one must apply for research proposals so that you get the research now what happens actually every year different agencies advertise uh, these uh, proposals sometimes in specific areas sometimes in broader areas and uh, we as a researchers or as assistant professor as school professor or professors we we try we apply for the research and generally then we say okay we applied for research proposal but it was not sanctioned generally hamari shikayat hoti hai humne apply kiya tha lekin sab research proposal nahi mila ek baar apply kiya do baar mein tod diya the general trend is that on an average on an average around 30% research proposals are sanctioned agar 100 research proposal kisi agency mein jata hai to it used to be about 30% ha in recent years log kehte hain ki kafi kam ho gaya hai but i still believe that 25 to 30% research proposals are sanctioned by the funding agency if your proposal is good it will be sanctioned the 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 shortcomings with you now i will be talking with you my own experience the shortcomings with us is that jab hum when the research proposal is advertised we okay research proposal is advertised it is given now generally 15 days or one month time is given at that time we start thinking about chalo bhai is a research proposal humko ek banana hai research proposal dekhna hai aur project submit karna hai so we we just try to give just one week or two day two week time for uh planning the whole research proposal or writing the research proposal this will not help what i say or what is my experience is that if you have to apply for a research project next year you start thinking this year itself you start thinking this year itself that you go through the research papers you go through the books and firstly come 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 with a, with an idea uh or come up with a, with the issue what is the problem what problem you want to do in research what are the essential ingredient of research proposal means what what you want to do in research kya karna chahte hain iske liye for that you have to study you have to go for a thorough research review you have to go for a very thorough research review then you will come up with issue ke ye kaam hame karna hai this work i have to do there in, in a particular area that there could be a scientific research or there could be a social science research in scientific research you go through different papers and then you come up okay this has been done this has been done this has been, this is the gap area which has to be done ye gap area is mein jo hum jisme hum kaam kar sakte hain and on i can do this solve this problem or you can look for a social problem you can so look for a social problem and then in the social problem also also you will have to look go in that particular area and try to see a preliminary data you will have to collect from that area that ye problem hai ye preliminary data ab hame batana hai ki hame aage kaise karenge so for just thinking the issue thinking the problem you will have to spend at least six months through books through journals through internet through google you go through this because there is a bombardment of knowledge nowadays in area any area so there is no dearth of knowledge pehle zamane mein hum log zamane mein sirf books hoti thi ya research papers ko university mein aate the you have to go through the those research papers nowadays there is a bombardment of knowledge you sit with your mobile or your laptop and you get knowledge 
So you have to look for what is the shortcoming in that particular area. Then you have to design. You have to design the research. Then we have to design how will the research achieve this objective. And then we will have to think about the benefit. Us research ye benefit kya hoga? Hame kya benefit hoga? Department ko kya benefit hoga? Society ko kya benefit hoga? Country ko kya benefit hoga? We will have to think that way. So ye teen cheeze aap before start starting to write a research proposal, we should be very clear in mind ki kya issue kya hai, problem kya hai, hum kaise karenge? Usse kya benefit hoga? Then what happens? Then outline kya outline steps hoga? Provide yourself with intellectual context. Ab yahan pe hume problem hai. Ab wahan pe aapka apko dimag lagana hai ki humko kaise kar karna hai. Intellectual context provide karna hai. That should be a creative. You should be. A, ye logo ne history se kiya. Aisa nahi ki unhone ek research paper kiya tha. Ek particular uh, plant pe kar liya hai. Plant ne kisi particular animal ka ham usi chiz ko dusre animal pe karte hai. Ya dusre plant pe karte hai. Ye nahi hoga. Or dusri species pe karte hai. You have to be creative. You should come up with a new idea. No, it, it should not be just repetition of the same idea. If it is just repetition of the same idea, you won't be getting the project. You should be very creative and justify your research problem. Our whose creativity ko justify karna hai, think through experiments. Jaise ke maine abhi bataya, you should have a pre preliminary data about that. For for science people, that preliminary data will come from through the the published work, maybe your or any other people, or through the Preliminary data, we, if it is a social science problem, through the preliminary data which we have collected from that particular area. So that you should, you should be very creative and justify your research problem. And then when you are still you are thinking, then you have to anticipate potential problem. problem that you have to anticipate also. problem what we are going to do when that problem occurs. And then the anticipate realistic timetable. हम जो काम करेंगे वो उतने timetable because the projects are for two to three years. हम जो करने जा रहे हैं क्या वो उतने time में वो हो पाएगा या नहीं हो पाएगा? क्या करते हैं हम basically research proposal written होती है written document होता है basically in in which we have to write the things of what we are going to do. Generally, what I suggest for youngers that before writing your research paper, you must find a mentor. That mentor can be your research supervisor, which is with whom you have done a PhD, or you can be head of the department, or you can be a department senior department. Because a man who has already run some project, he will always have experience as compared to the one who is just going to submit his first proposal. So basic, better is that we must choose a, a mentor. Then choosing a project, we will choose a project. A project choose करने के लिए ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि हमने जो PhD की थी उसी काम को हम आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं ऐसा भी हो सकता है और as I told you through the literature you have come up with a new idea or in that new idea you will have to develop research questions क्या questions होंगे and then आप proposal लिखेंगे finding a mentor okay I'm not going to into details के mentor ऐसा ना कर लें जो आपके problem के लिए ज़्यादा in addition to supporting, he may create a problem. So you will have to be very uh, choosy when you are choosing a mentor. Now, project choose establish good rationale of the project, and that can be built on your PhD work, or uh, or be sure there is time for reviewing the literature, getting regulatory. Many projects have regulatory approvals. Uh, if you are doing a survey of northeastern region, you are doing a survey of Kashmir region, or you are uh, uh, making, making a survey of some national parks or uh, other kind of thing, you have to take permission. So, after the proposal, submit the you will be prepared to take all these permissions, etc. If the project involves making phone calls or questionnaires, etc., etc., these are the things that you have to prepare for. Now, we have to develop questions. Basically, we write the title of the project and then we write certain objectives. Now, in objectives, we have to do are the research objectives visible? Do we have to do it? Is it feasible in time? 
the sample size is feasible or do you have the technical expert expertise or not we have to look at that there is, there is a possibility that you may have come up with uh, with a very good uh, uh, objective very good research proposal but are you technically a technically expert in that particular area that has to be seen because the expert will see whether you are capable of doing uh, that or not similarly if you are making uh, some survey work the the sample size is enough or not give a, a statistical uh, uh, complete statistical analysis or uh, statistically viable results or will you, will you be able to complete that work in the time which is required? are the question the, the question which you have raised are the new interesting questions is the scope of the study is well focused is it ethical to ask these research sometimes you go and make uh, ask questions you prepare a questionnaire or question is it ethical to ask, ask those questions or not that has to be seen Actually, nowadays, uh, every research project wants a co-investigator. So earlier, co-investigator was not compulsory. But nowadays, the government says that if we grant uh, some 50 lakhs or 10 lakhs or 20 lakh rupees to you or something happens to you, the whole money will be lost. So that's why they say that you must have a co-investigator project. And you have to be very choosy when you are asked choosing a co-investigator. That co-investigator should be uh, well versed with the subject. It should be really going to help you it's not that just you use his name he should be really going to help you so you have to choose a co-investigator of that type Up research proposals me kya hota hai? elements kya hota hai? Us ke objective hota hai. Us objective ke justification hota hai. you have to give uh, an introduction background uh introduction about the work and the background through review literature methodology time framework and the personal needed facilities needed ye basic framework hota hai kisi research proposal in any such proposal, whether it is from this agency or that agency, this is the basic framework for every such proposal. So, but so what happens when you so the first thing is that you have to choose a title. It's better you try to choose a very simple title. A very lumbas a title to you. It should be very precise temples so that you can uh, the when the referee sees the title, you understand what you want to do. Understanding the uh, any any title should be very simple. The in charge line cap or lumbar the title name it should be very simple and very clearly understood. understood. Title on a chair. Then uh, similarly, the aims and objectives which you are going to give that is very critical. What are the aims and objectives? What what happens when we uh, you are a young faculty? When we submit a research project, we become very enthusiastic. What happens? I have that So we become very enthusiastic, and when we start writing aims and objectives, we will do this, we will do this, we will do but you have to be very cautious that the time which is giving, being given to you for that project is two years or three years. You have to be very precise that, okay, there are problems. Ek, do, three, char, paach, che, bossi problems hai. But in this period, I will be able to do only these two or three problems. So you have to write the aims objective, just two or three or aims objective, which actually you will be able to do in that period. I'm both uh, enthusiastic, okay, both say aims and objective happen because the people who are sitting over there as referee, they know they are very senior people, they know how much work uh, is required for any objective. So, if we are over enthusiastic, okay, we have our 10 point link, we have to do this, and then when you face the problem, uh, when you have to go and present the, 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 uh, the proposal before the committee, you won't be able to justify them. So you have to be very critical and you have to be very conservative when you are writing aims and objectives. So we do objective it's a period of Then, uh, you have to give a complete uh, background of literature. Then what is the national level? International. Every, every research proposal, you have to give a detail about national or international uh, review ground both uh, national international review uh, that has to be given and that uh, basically starts from the introduction itself introduction you have thing is you can initiate karenge, kya problem hai, hum kya karna hai. that starts from the introduction and then it goes to the uh, background information in that 
then uh, the project became aims and objective. I got that you, you will have, have, a, have a hypothesis for everything. There is a hypothesis. So uh, when you give a hypothesis, you should be very rational. Your, your hypothesis should be, it should be clearly stated the hypothesis or number of hypothesis and your hypothesis and what do you expect to get. Don't you see the hypothesis there? Yeah, I pay hypothesis and then you say, I, I, I can expect this type of result. So you have to be uh, very rational in giving hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, okay, so your hypothesis will be very rational. And then after, so you have given your uh, aims and objective, you have given uh, your uh, review literature, you have given the hypothesis. Then you have to come up with methodology. How you are going to do that methodology? This section of your proposal has multiple parts: uh, instrumentation and infrastructure, study group and ethics, access to sample. For each one of them, you will have to explain. If instrumentation or infrastructure, then you will have to write. These these instruments are available in my lab or in my department or my university, and these these instruments I need. Study groups may have to put on a polega, I'm called over a hand. Yeah, I'm a yard of a pine carrying a or disagreed a pine carrying a sample some cases are becoming a cause is a becoming a data analysis case occurring a which is statistical method I will be using. So you have to justify the methods, uh, every method all the day. You will have to justify the choice of all the methods which you're taking. You have to justify the, the statistics which you're going to do. So and then you have to prove the feasibility of the study also here. In methodology itself, you have to prove. So how you are going to do that, what are the instruments which is required, what is the study group which is required, how you will be able to reach the sample, and how you will be doing the data analysis, this thing has to be given in methodology part. Then you have uh, a timeline has to be given because uh, as I told you, the, the projects are for two to three periods. Uh, ICSSR projects are generally for two years. DST, DBT projects are generally for three years. So you have to give a timeline for three months of what I will be doing. Next six months, what you, I will be doing. Next six months, I will, uh, uh, what I will be doing. Then you have to keep in mind that every year you have to submit uh, the the result of the, of the work, which uh, that is the progress report, you have to submit every year. You have to submit uh, uh, utilization certificate of the fund every year. So these things you will have to keep in mind. You have to be very careful that uh, how much time will be required for preparing the report, how much time will be required for experiments, how much time will be required for even purchasing instruments. So these things have to be given in the timeline for entire three years or two years. So this, this basically makes your uh, proposal, your aims and objectives, your, uh, your uh, introduction, your uh, background of uh, both uh, literature, national, international, and uh, methodology, etc., and timeline. Now, what happens uh, in every project? This is the project of basic framework. What in every project on the very first page itself, you have to give a summary. ये बात कर चीजें आपने लिख ली नो इसके बेस पे समरी आप तैयार करें ऑन द फर्स्ट पेज इन एवरी प्रोजेक्ट ऊपर आपसे टाइटल लिखा जाएगा प्रोजेक्ट का उसके नीचे यू विल हैव टू राइट योर नेम एंड डिपार्टमेंट एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा एंड देन दे आस्क अबाउट 150 टू 200 वर्ड्स समरी ऑफ द प्रपोजल देयर इज यूजुअली वन पैराग्राफ टेलिंग द रिव्यूअर एवरीथिंग दे नीड टू नो अबाउट द रिसर्च प्रपोजल एक पैराग्राफ होता है 100 150 टू 200 वर्ड्स का जिसमें अह you have to put everything, pura real jisko uh, summary kata, you have to put everything. What happens is the, the, the persons who are, the research proposals are submitted to the agency, agency gives, send it to different uh, persons, reviewers. And these the reviewers are really very senior people. So that they, 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 every day, uh, month or every week, they get several research proposals for reviewing. And they have very limited time. So, when the project is going to go to them, first of all, you have to read the first page. If the first page appears to them interesting, that is, there is, for them, they think that there is some content in this proposal, or this, this proposal is interesting. Only then they will be going to the entire proposal. तभी वो दूसरा पेज पलटेंगे और तीसरा चौथा पेज पढ़के आगे देखेंगे आप क्या करना चाहते हैं कैसे। If the first page is not interesting, 
they will just put your proposal side away and they, they will give you a comment. So what happens? The, this proposal, this provides the opportunity to gain the reviewer interest and excitement about the proposal. It should contain the background on why the research is important, hypothesis and objective. Everything in that paragraph, you have to write everything in that paragraph. Why is it important? What is the hypothesis? What is the objective? And what are you going to do with this new thing? And finally, it should in a clear statement demonstrate why the project is significant and what impact it will have. Basically, in the day of the day, you have to write why this proposal is important. हम कैसे करने जा रहे हैं हम कैपेबल हैं कि नहीं करने के लिए और इससे फायदा क्या होगा टू टू सब्जेक्ट एंड टू दिन टू नेशन व्हाट इट विल बी गेम अगर वो आप जस्टिफाई कर पाते हैं 150 वर्ड्स इफ यू आर एबल टू जस्टिफाई दैट योर प्रपोजल यू कैन थिंक दैट देयर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट यू विल बी गेटिंग पॉजिटिव रेस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम द रेफरी सो वन हैज टू बी वेरी मच वेरी मच क्लियर इन राइटिंग समरी बहुत क्लियर कट समरी आपके होने चाहिए जैसे हम कहते हैं सो हम जब बाहर लड़के अप्लाई करते हैं हमारे यहाँ से पीएचडी के लिए रेफरी के तो हम लोग कहते हैं कि योर एसओपी शुड बी वेरी क्लियर व्हाट इज एसओपी दैट इज दी दी वर्क विच यू आर विच यू आर गोइंग टू डू ओवर देयर द टेक्निकल प्रोग्राम so he similarly the summary is basically SOP of the research proposal. What is the what you want to do, how you will be doing, and what is the end result, and what gain uh, the subject will be uh, getting, or what subject what gain the uh, the country will be getting out of that. Then of course uh, time timeline ke baad aapko budget dena padta hai. Uh, give uh, the in instruments, if you are asking, then how much money is for instruments? And if you are asking for personal money, then what is for that? Or for conference management? There are different problems you give money. But you have to be very particular because the agency generally do not want to give more budget. And for your research, you would like to have more and more funds. So there is lots of discussion at this point itself. But you will have to justify for everything. कि हम इतना पैसा चाहिए तो क्यों चाहिए आज आसानी से पैसा मिलता नहीं है तो यू हैव टू जस्टिफाई दिस ओके बाद देन द द यू सबमिट द रिसर्च प्रपोजल रिसर्च प्रपोजल गोस टू द रेफरीज दे सेंड इट टू सेवरे रेफरीज एंड समटाइम्स सम ऑफ द एजेंसीज आस्क यू द नेम ऑफ द रेफरीज आल्सो उनके पास भी एक लिस्ट होती so when you are giving, our experience may say that when you are giving the name of referee from your side, बहुत ज़्यादे सीनियर लोगों के नाम मत दीजिए बहुत जो एक्सपर्टीज़ हैं, because बहुत ज़्यादे सीनियर होंगे और अपने फील्ड के अगर एक्सपर्ट होंगे, they will be very critical. और ऐसे लोगों का नाम नहीं दीजिए, वो सम किसी न किसी फॉर्म में आपसे कुछ उनको प्रॉब्लम्स रही हों, so you have to be very careful in giving the names of the referee. ना बहुत ही सीनियर लोगों के नाम दे दीजिए जो बहुत क्रिटिकल हों सीनियर लोगों के नाम हैं अगर वो बहुत क्रिटिकल हैं समटाइम्स दे आर वेरी सीनियर पीपल वो आर नॉट वेरी क्रिटिकल सो इट्स गुड यू कैन गिव देयर नेम लेकिन कुछ लोग ऐसे होते हैं बहुत क्रिटिकल होते हैं तो जनरली पैसे ये होता है कि उनका नाम कुछ लोग होता है बिलाव वजह के ऑब्जेक्शन बहुत से लोग होते हैं जो आपके फील्ड में कभी किसी जमाने में आपके साथ रहे हैं और अंदरूनी इंडियन फीलिंग है यू नो इंडियन फीलिंग हम नहीं चाहते हैं कि जब हमारे साथ वाले दूसरे को कुछ अच्छी चीज हो जाए डेट इस टिपिकल इंडियन फीलिंग वो वाला आदमी हो तो वैसे को नाम ना दे ओके सो देर अब रिव्यूअर आपका हाँ इसमें आपको एक चीज और ऐड करनी होगी लास्ट में में उसके बाद आपको अपना सीवी ऐड करना पड़ता है यू यू पेड � should be academic CV, not the CV which nowadays it is commonly available on the net. As the net pe ladke banane lage hai CV, that is more industry type of CV. It is not academic CV. Academic CV mein basically you have to write your name, your uh, qualification, your experience as a, as a lecturer or the reader or a professor. Aapne ke, ke te conferences attend ki hai, ke te paper chaape hai. Is tarah ki cheeze hoti hai. Us, jo, aaj ke jo CV banna laga hai, usme pure 
ऊपर एक माहौल बना दिया जाता है एक पैराग्राफ का कि आई कैन डू दिस और आई एम दैट एंड दिस एंड और बस उसके बाद पीछे नाम लिखा जाता है दैट सीवी इज जनरली नॉट एकेडमिक सीवी एकेडमिक सीवी शुड बी अ वेरी सिंपल सीवी वेयर यू हैव टू राइट योर एकेडमिक क्वालिफिकेशन ईयर वाइज पीएससी कब किया एमएससी कब किया पीएचडी कब किया पीएचडी कहां से किया पीएचडी का टॉपिक क्या था एमएससी का डिसर्टेशन था तो उसका टॉपिक क्या था उसके बाद कितने दिन से यहाँ पे असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर है या तो प्रोफेसर है वो क्या रिसर्च पेपर छापे तो वेरी सिंपल स्टेट फॉरवर्ड सी बी शुड बी देयर दैट हैज टू बी देन ओके देन दी प्रपोजल विल गो टू द एजेंसी एजेंसी विल सेंड इट टू द रेफरीज एंड द रेफरी व्हाट दे विल डू द एम्स एंड ऑब्जेक्ट दे विल सी दैट द एम्स आर ऑब्जेक्टिव जैसा मैंने शुरू में बताया द एम्स ऑब्जेक्टिव आर लाइकली टू अचीवेबल इन द गिवन पीरियड सबसे पहले वो देखेगा जो आपने ऑब्जेक्टिव दिया वो उस पीरियड में इन दैट पीरियड इट इज पॉसिबल टू बी डन और नॉट देन द रैशनल ऑफ द प्रपोज स्टडी इज इट रीजनेबल और नॉट एंड द साइंटिफिक डिजाइन डिस्क्राइब इज एडिक्वेटली जस्टिफाइड और नॉट ये तीन चीज बेसिकली रेफरी के पास जो जाएगा भेजेगा एंड ऑन दैट बेसिस इट विल गिव द रिकमेंडेशन टू द एजेंसी अब एजेंसी के पास क्या होगा वंस दे गिव गेट फेवरेबल रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ कोर्स सीवी If once they get favorable recommendation from 70% of the paper of the referees, they will invite you to present to your paper to the agency. Which agency is invite? Not do they directly project sanction? Do they? Which agency invite? Do they? So, in when you are going to a, present your research proposal, you will be able to make a PowerPoint presentation and make it in a systematic way. Then, you will tell about the background. इंट्रोडक्शन में बताएंगे बैकग्राउंड रिसर्च प्रपोजल का क्या क्या है उसके बाद एम्स एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव एवरीथिंग जस्टिफिकेशन विल बी गोइंग सो नाउ व्हेन यू आर प्रेजेंटिंग देयर एक एक दो चीजें यहाँ पे बहुत जरूरी है व्हेन यू आर प्रेजेंटिंग देयर यू शुड बी वेरी हम्बल You should be very humble in presenting your paper. कुछ लोग जो होते हैं बहुत ही high profile हो सकता है बहुत अच्छी अंग्रेजी आती हो या बहुत अच्छा बोलना जानते हो दे दे में भी very good speaker and they will try to speak a lot of things and they will try to show themselves that I am I am boss of everything. You should be should not be doing that. You should be very submissive over there and uh, uh, very humble over there when you are presenting. because the people who are sitting over there that bara log jo baithe hue hain samne they are very senior people and they have been facing this type of persons almost every day so you should be very humble but in in, in addition to being humble you should be able to convince the way the audience that what you are going to do is is worth doing and i am capable of doing that do basic cheeze hai jo hum project submit kar rahe hain wo hai karne ke liye aur hum isko capable karne ke capable hain ये दो चीज अगर आपने जस्टिफाई कर लिया अब उसके लिए सिस्टमेटिकली वे में आप प्रेजेंट करेंगे वही उसी तरह से इंट्रोडक्शन से और ऑब्जेक्ट से जैसे अगर चलते हैं वो करेंगे देन देर इज ऑलवेज ए पॉसिबिलिटी दैट योर प्रोजेक्ट विल बी सैंक्शन द प्रपोज रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट मस्ट क्लियरली इंडिकेट इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव नेशनल इंटरनेशनल स्टेटस गैप एरिया एक्सपेक्टेड रिजल्ट विद इन द प्रपोज टाइम ब्रेक द रिसर्च प्रपोजल मस्ट फॉलो को हाँ कोई कभी कभी जब एडवर्टाइज करते हैं तो स्पेसिफिक एरियाज भी उसमें एडवर्टाइज करते हैं तो उस एरिया एक्सप्लिसिट एरिया के अंदर आपका होना चाहिए टेक्निकल फिजिबिलिटी ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट शुड बी देयर इट शुड बी ऑफ नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस सिमिलरली कुछ चीजें यूनिवर्सिटी में भी जरूरी हैं कि समटाइम्स व्हाट हैपेंस वी राइट द प्रोजेक्ट प्रोजेक्ट और उसके बाद फ्रॉम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द पीआई उसको हेड के दस्तखत होंगे डीन के दस्तखत होंगे रजिस्ट्रार के दस्तखत होते हैं उसमें होने में इतना टाइम लग जाता है कि रिसर्च प्रपोजल सबमिट होने का टाइम खत्म हो जाता है सो यूनिवर्सिटी शुड टेक केयर ऑफ दैट इन यूनिवर्सिटी शुड हैव अ सिंगल विंडो मैकेनिज्म थ्रू विच द रिसर्च प्रपोजल शुड बी सबमिटेड इन आवर यूनिवर्सिटी वी हैव स्टार्टेड दिस सिंगल सिंगल विंडो फ्रॉम वेयर द रिसर्च प्रपोजल इज सबमिटेड डायरेक्टली टू द एजेंसीज एंड वंस द प्रोजेक्ट इज सैंक्शन समटाइम देयर आर प्रॉब्लम्स विद द पीआई एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव अथॉरिटी पी आई की होनी चाहिए बट समाइम्स इन यूनिवर्सिटी दर इज ऑलवेज प्रॉब्लम आपका पी इन्वेस्टमेंट खरीदने में लॉट्स ऑफ प्रॉब्लम होती है लोग आपका जो है डिफरेंट एजेंसीज आपकी प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट करती है एंड यूनिवर्सिटी क्रिएट सो दैट दो प्रॉब्लम्स आर देर बट वी शुड नॉट गेट फ्रस्ट्रेटेड विद दो प्रॉब्लम्स वंस ये प्रोजेक्ट इज सबमिटेड इज सबमिटेड एंड इफ इट इज ग्रांटेड यू हैव टू बी वेरी clear in uh, doing that project and you should be able to do that uh, in a nice way i think i have been able to justify uh, what was needed here any question from you people is most welcome
Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, 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 sir. Thank Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Dr. G. Kathari, in 2022, Dr. G. October 2022, Dr. G. Kathari, in October 2022, Dr. G. Kathari, in October 2022, that is what I am saying. For the last several years, UGC is not giving money. UGC, UGC is talking a lot, but when it comes to funding, it's not giving funding for any kind of project. Every day from UGC, you will have one directive on the website. Today, the boss is not here, but it comes to funding. By that, you thought you bought a lot of UGC, but it will be a lot of UGC. But there is no money in the UGC. हमारे यहां से बहुत से प्रोजेक्ट सबमिट हुए थे उठारे ही नहीं एमिरेटस का फॉर्म था और मिड फैकल्टी के थे बहुत से फेलोशिप थे चार पांच तरह के थे जिनका 10 अक्टूबर 2022 डेट थी मुझे आज भी याद है बट देयर इज नो अपडेट फ्रॉम यूजीसी व्हेन यू इफ यू आस्क देम दे विल नॉट आंसर यू दिस इज अनफॉर्चूनेट पार्ट वी कांट हेल्प वी आर टीचर्स वी कांट हेल्प बट वी मस्ट डू नॉट गेट डिसहार्टन दूसरी एजेंसीज हैं उसमें अप्लाई कीजिए देयर इज ऑलवेज अ पॉजिटिव there are many other agencies for funding. Funding is a problem. Hai. There is no doubt about that. There is a problem. The funding has become gradually very difficult in our country. But still, people are getting funds. So you must... It's not that we leave it. I said that you can apply it. You can't apply it. It's not that you can apply it. You can apply it again. 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 We must apply it. It will be found. That's why I say to other agencies, the projects are also saying that you must apply it. It's not that you can apply it. Because with my experience of four decades, I have been able to avail almost all the foreign fellowships. Almost all the foreign fellowships, whether it's the British Council or Royal Society or Erasmus Mundus or JSPS or TWAS or Insaki Kaibar, I have availed almost all the fellowships. So you must apply. You should not do that. Yes sir. yes, sir. This year, sir, I submitted a project in the UPCST. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh, UPCST is at the Slack group. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. It is pending, sir. Result is pending. Ah, yes, delay is delayed. Funding is a problem. I have said that the government is saying that we will give 10,000 crores, but in that case, we will give 6,000 crores. You also know, we also know how much of our industry is in the research. You know it very well. Lekin we have to live with it. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.